Hi guys, welcome into Travel Dogs. If you didn't watch our video last week, we covered the sizing and selection of muzzles for your dogs. And if you didn't get a chance to watch that, you can go ahead and click the card above. This week, we're going into our journey for training Delilah with a muzzle. We're gonna cover tips and tricks throughout the video of what we did in order to get her comfortable in a muzzle. But keep in mind that your dog is a unique individual and things that work for us might not work for you. We just wanted to give you a jumping off point and give you some ideas of what you could do to get your dog comfortable in a muzzle. We are not experts. We can only speak to what we have experience with. But as I've said before, there is a whole community of people out there ready and willing to help. Always look for multiple sources of advice and different things when deciding to muzzle train your dog because you never know where the most helpful tips might come from. So let's just start with this video and we hope it helps. We're going away, get your back, check the tag, decision is made, lock your door, need no more, it's a journey. All right guys, so before we get into this video, make sure you go down, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell for notifications. It really helps us out to continue making videos like this, and we really want you to become a part of the Travel Dogs family and be a part of this community. Ask us questions, give us feedback, and if you're somebody that's coming here just to check the video out and you have your own advice and you've done this journey yourself, please, please, feel more than comfortable to leave those tips in the comments. I'm sure it would be very helpful for others who are still starting this journey. Before we waste too much time, let's get right into the video. So a couple of the details that maybe are important to understand about Delilah to understand some of the tips that we're giving is A, our purpose for muzzle training. She's fear reactive, so we needed to be able to muzzle train her for getting comfortable and wearing them around people for long durations outside or when we have guests over. Just a quick clarification, when muzzling a dog, make sure that you're not leaving them in it for too long of a period. Don't just put it on them and expect them to wear it for hours at a time. And also make sure that you're never leaving them unattended in their muzzle. We had always up to this point been rather hesitant about getting her into a muzzle because there is a stigma involved in muzzle training your dog. We are here to tell you that that couldn't be further from the truth and we'll go into detail about our experience with muzzle training Delilah. The most important aspect to accomplishing this task is to make sure that your dog is comfortable in it and to build up a positive connotation with wearing the muzzle. So there's some things that you can do prior to actually introducing them to the muzzle that you might not think about depending on what your dog is like. Delilah was very afraid of random objects and if you have a dog like that you'll kind of understand what we're talking about. You could be opening a box that you got at the store of something random like face wash or <laughs> Installing. Box of face wash? I, I don't know. Just if you bought something. Leave a store. comment if you use face wash out of a box. <laughs> okay. You could be opening a box of something or a bottle of pills or something and Delilah would kind of tuck her tail and run in the other room. She was not a fan of things that she didn't know what they were, especially even if they made a quiet, somewhat unfamiliar noise. So essentially there was a lot of things that we had done prior to the muzzle training that had built up her confidence and really helped her with that fear of objects prior to muzzle training. The reason I'm bringing this up is that a lot of people have this issue with their dogs when they start trying to muzzle train and their dog is very afraid of it just like a lot of other objects. It really helped us having that open line of communication with her so that there was mutual understanding about what was happening and she wasn't afraid of what we were doing because she trusted us and because we had built that line of communication. If you do have a dog that you know is really afraid of objects, it might be important to start doing some confidence building prior to introducing the muzzle. So now let's talk about the actual muzzle training process. The first muzzle we bought was actually not the muzzle that she wears nowadays. This is her Leerberg. This is her 
basket muzzle that she currently wears that we finally worked our way into. And this is her Baskerville. This is the one that we started with. And it was really great for getting us started and her started and introducing us to what a muzzle is and how it can be effective. Now going out into public and going on adventures with her, we quickly realized that it wasn't going to be the proper fit for her long term because again, she only had that half pant as compared to being able to get the full pant in for the longer excursions. And it's not technically bite proof, which we wanted that comfortability for worst case scenario situations. That was the whole purpose of muzzling her. So, you know, it didn't really meet our needs at long term, but it definitely met our needs for training. And I'm gonna explain that for a minute. So this muzzle is much more affordable than her Learberg muzzle. And that can be really helpful when you're just introducing something that you're not making a big financial commitment to getting into a new process. And you know, it's really lightweight, it's really simplistic and easy. It's really easy to put on, which is important I think for muzzle training. You know, our Learberg, while we really like it, it has a belt strap kind of thing where it takes a little, it's not as easy to put on very quickly compared to just, um, throwing this on and I'm clipping it. And that can be an important factor when you're doing baby steps to getting a dog comfortable to wearing a muzzle. You wanna be able to take something on and off quickly and comfortably for your sake and for your dog's sake. And so this was something that was really helpful about the Baskerville and I would still recommend it when getting started with training. And I also recommend it as keeping on hand as a backup. You never know if something could happen to your muzzle and you can't necessarily, you know, depending on your financial situation, it might be hard to afford uh, two Learbergs or, you know, more expensive brands of muzzles on hand. So you might have your go-to main muzzle and I think it is always smart to have something just in case something happens to that muzzle. The Baskerville might also be slightly more accessible at your local pet store, whereas the Learberg is probably something that you're going to have to order online. So okay, now we've built her confidence around objects in general. We decided we wanted to start muzzle training her. So how do we build confidence with a muzzle? Not all dogs are food motivated. And that's something that's important to consider. Delilah's probably middle of the pack when it comes to that. So she's not super food motivated. She's not what I would consider unfood motivated. But if she gets into a situation where she's really stressed out, treat training doesn't really work for her. And so that's where we had to really be careful about how we implemented the muzzle early on. We were able to utilize treats as a positive reinforcement for her, but it wasn't something we could just rely on completely. Depending on the day, depending on her mood, it wasn't always a good day to muzzle train. That's something important to keep in mind, especially if you have an anxious dog. You know, you really want to look at what their mental health of that day is. And I don't know, I mean, how other dogs are, but I think that's definitely true for Delilah. So it's really important to, when there's a good day, to take that opportunity as a chance to associate it with that good feeling. I want to utilize the word threshold. It's something that gets utilized a lot with training in general and it's definitely important when muzzle training. If you feel like your dog is going past their threshold, they're getting too stressed or it's becoming too much for them and the training isn't working well, it's important to take a deep breath and say, okay, it's probably time to take a break and not just force the issue with them. Another aspect of mood that's really important to consider is to not just associate the muzzle with people coming over. You want to really take advantage of those situations where it's just the mundane, mundanity, mundane, mundane. the mundaneness of a day and really being able to get them comfortable with this is just something we do now and not this situation is happening so I need to be muzzled. So it's really important to utilize those mundane moments to work your way up. You know, start small, reward for good behavior and really create those positive experiences with the muzzle. You never want to use it as a punishment. The whole point of muzzle training and not just throwing a muzzle on your dog's face and saying you're gonna wear this and that's just how it is, is that you're trying to build a positive association. So if you're choosing to muzzle train your dog because they have anxiety or fear reactivity or aggression, you don't want to start muzzle training them while they're near their stressors. You want to start training them actually in an opposite way. An important aspect of muzzle training is start small. You're not just gonna put this thing on them first day and leave it on them for the entire time. 
you need to introduce it slowly. Before even getting near putting it on their face, show them the muzzle. Let them sniff it, let them experiment with it, let them set it down, let them look at it without you touching it, and give them treats when they do something positive. You know, if they're shy about looking at it and investigating and then they finally like touch their nose to it or something, give them a treat. Reward them and build that positive association immediately. Once your dog has gotten comfortable with the muzzle just being around, you know, it's time for them to start getting comfortable with it on their face. This doesn't go with strapping it to them, but you know, put it on for one second, take it off, immediately reward them. This will give them that positive connotation that you're looking for. And it will build comfortability that, you know, just because it goes on to them doesn't make them feel trapped and it doesn't make them feel like it's gonna be there forever. As you can see in this footage, we showed putting the treat inside the muzzle as a way to encourage Delilah to put her face into the muzzle. That's actually not something we did when we were muzzle training, but I think it's probably more practical and a better way to go about doing it. So that's what we showed here. So let's say you get to the point of the process where you're able to put the muzzle on there face without strapping it and they're doing really well and they can do that for longer durations at a time. They're expecting treats through it or you know maybe they're not food motivated and you're just building up this process and they're not trying to get out of it and it's a comfortable thing for them. Now it's time to move forward into strapping the muzzle to them. This is why I said the Baskerville was a really instrumental in that early stage because it's a really quick and easy clip on, clip off, and you can do it in a second and your dog doesn't have to get uncomfortable while you're struggling with a buckle. That's really important because the strap aspect is the point where some dogs can do really well in the early stages, but as soon as you actually strap it to their head, it can be a little bit weird for them. And that's why it's important that no matter how good they seem they're doing, you need to, in the first few steps of buckling them on and off, you need to really just do it on and off and you need to not push them to their limit. This is the first stage in which threshold really comes into play. If you notice a comfortability, they're trying to get their head out of it or they're not enjoying the process, then it's time to go back a step and slow down. Be mindful of your own emotions when you're muzzle training. If you're starting to get stressed out, it might be time for you to take a break too. You don't want your dog feeding off of your negative energy. It's important to remain patient and make your dog feel comfortable every step of the way. All right, now they're able to wear it. It's time to start extending the duration that you have the muzzle on them. You know, take this opportunity to reward them. They've really come a long way since the start of this process. Once Delilah was comfortable in the muzzle, we really started implementing the activities that she has a blast doing. She likes to go outside during the summertime and play in the sprinklers. So we took advantage of that and put her in it and then let her participate in this activity that we know she loves to do. And it really just built that extra level of comfortability and enjoyment in wearing it. And you know, ultimately a surprising aspect of it is we learned that she actually got another level of confidence wearing the muzzle outside. It was something that we didn't originally anticipate. So point here being once they can actually start wearing the muzzle for longer durations, you can really implement other positive associations other than just treats. Find activities that they really enjoy doing that don't necessarily require chewing and stuff of that sort. And you know, come up with fun distractions for them when they're starting to wear the muzzle for a couple minutes at a time. One thing that we really like to do with Delilah is play fetch. I know this doesn't really sound like something that a dog in a muzzle could do, but what we like to do is throw whatever she is fetching and then run with her to the object and carry it back with her. And it sounds dumb, I know, but <laughs> she really enjoys this activity and it's one of her favorite things to do at the park. There was actually some surprise for us that she actually seemed really excited that one of us was coming with her. Like, I remember the first time we did it, Adam like threw this stick and her and I were running and she kept like looking at me and it was like she was trying to run harder and she would just wag really hard. And then we got to it and she's like going after the stick and I would hold it in front of her snout and we'd run it back and she would want to go again and again and you know we just made it a fun goofy loving process and that's what it should be just like any other form of training for your dog it should be fun it should be paced appropriately for your dog and it shouldn't feel like work all the time once you've come this far along in the process and your dog is comfortable wearing that muzzle for more than 
five to ten minutes at a time. If you haven't already, it's probably time to invest in the more expensive long-term muzzle that they're going to be wearing. You know that this aspect of their life is going to be long-term because it's having such a positive effect. So you really want to invest in the room for them to grow and for their muzzle comfortability to grow with them. And that being said, you know, we're making the recommendation here that we really liked the process of using the Baskerville and then switching to Lairberg early on. We had a really positive experience with that. Some people might recommend, nope, just go with the comfortable big muzzle right out the gate and you know that's totally up to them. One thing I will say is it was hard to get the sizing really fit perfectly with this muzzle though and I'm glad that we didn't have to be fumbling around and doing that in the early stages. I really liked that we just had something that was quick and easy while we were getting her used to it. But you know that being said, take into consideration what your financial situation is, what your dog is like, what their comfortability is, and make the right decision for you. This is just something that we did that we felt like was really helpful in our training process with Delilah. If you do decide to go with this process, once the dog is wearing their muzzle comfortably for about five, 10 minutes, switching to the Learberg or whatever muzzle you decide to go with, around that stage is probably good because they're at least wearing it long enough that you can get the adjustments and the sizing right with the more expensive muzzle. And one aspect that you won't necessarily consider is that in our experience, Delilah with the Baskerville, she had gotten so used to it and comfortable for long durations. Once we switched over to that Learberg, it was like stretching out in a Cadillac. Delilah had no pushback at that point. She had gotten comfortable in the Baskerville. Now the Learberg was her friend and she got excited when she saw it. While we had a great experience initially training Delilah in the Baskerville and she is technically a bite risk, she isn't a highly aggressive dog in most situations. When dealing with a dog that might have a little more reactivity or aggression, it might be important to consider getting a bite proof muzzle right away despite what we're talking about. That's why it's so important when making these kinds of decisions to consult professionals that know your dog and understand your situation fully so that you can make the right decision for your dog. Positive association is something that can be lost if you don't keep up on it. So let's say you're muzzle training your dog and they're only gonna be wearing it occasionally or even if they are wearing it every day but only around their stressors. This is something that you need to be mindful of. You can't just rely on the early stages of your training forever that your dog is always going to maintain that positive association. You need to remember that positive association is something that goes for the longevity of the muzzle. You can't just build a positive association early on and then only put the muzzle on for negative situations once they're comfortable. You need to continue being mindful of, hey, they haven't worn their muzzle in a positive way this week. Let's do something fun with the muzzle on. This video doesn't go over everything that it takes to properly muzzle train your dog. It just goes over a couple standout tips and tricks that we felt like were important in our journey with our dog. An aspect that will really help you in this process is not using it as a punishment method. It should never be used in that situation. Training is a way of life and a well-trained dog is a happy dog. If you found this video and you liked it, I'm so glad it helped, but yes, please, Go out, do more reading, do more research, reach out to more experts, talk to your veterinarian, talk to your dog trainer, get other tips that are specific to your dog and expertise from people who can really address your specific dog's needs. We're more than happy to help with anything that we can. And if we don't know the answer, we will help you go out there and find the answer, or at least direct you in the proper direction. So if this video has been helpful to you, please feel free to like it. It really helps us make more videos just like this. And also, as always, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you're notified when more videos just like this one are posted. If you're somebody that has your own journey and your own experience and you wanna provide other tips, please leave them in the comments. I'm sure for people that are early on in the process or even people who aren't, some of those tips are super useful and we'd love to hear some feedback too. If you've made it this far in the video, we really appreciate you. We hope that it's been helpful for you and as always, thanks for traveling with us, guys. Bye.